Pacifica locals, we are here at the Pacifica Chamber of Commerce with Dr. Eddie Haro from Eureka Square Chiropractic. And uh, we did a video, I don't know, a month or so ago. It was a month, uh, yeah, a little, a month month or, almost so. two months ago, yeah. And uh, Robbie Bancroft said he wanted to see the stuff that you can't find on Google. <laughs> so, so yes, the we, real. We, the real deal, mm -hmm. the real story. So he said, oh, you should, uh, you should be like the Oprah of Pacifica. And I said, Oprah is old. It's 90s. I, yeah, yeah, it's a little. It looks a little old. So I yeah. said, I want to be the Joe Rogan of Pacifica. There you go. So this is our first episode of Jopra. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought we'd just kind of have a conversation. Um, initially, you talked about uh, you worked at UPS. And was that where you were injured? So no, actually, it was in high school originally. So I went to Oceana High School, it's right up the street, my freshman year, but then I transferred to South San Francisco High School. And then there I uh, wrestled. You know, I wanted to play sports. Oceana at the time didn't have a, you know, football or wrestling. Now they do, but I, I wanted to wrestle. So. Oh, they have sports now? They, they have sports now, yeah. Oh, okay. So I, I just missed out. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, just over, you know, wrestling, you know, repetitive, you know, throwing motions and, you know, being thrown down and what have you, I ended up um, hurting my back and to the point where, you know, I was, I couldn't move. I was, you know, I would have muscle spasms and, you know, just pain down my leg and, you know, so at the time I saw a chiropractor and then I was also in a car accident. So, you know, we, we saw a chiropractor, but I didn't really know what chiropractic was at the time. You know, we just, I just went, you know, they adjusted me, I got better. Okay, like chiropractor wasn't explained to me. And so I know when I, I used to go to chiropractor, mm -hmm. um, especially when I was a kid, I got into a couple car accidents and we used to go to Dr. Allwinder in South City mm -hmm. and he, he would adjust me and then I would feel awesome and I would go back to whatever I was doing mm -hmm. and then I would hurt myself again. So did you know to kind of take it easy? This is in high school, right? In high school, yeah. So I'm going to guess that being in high school, you just went right back to what you were doing? Yes. Or, oh, so no. Went right back to what I was doing. And then, you know, so from then on, that kind of set like a little just slippery slope of just more injuries for me. So I was, I remember I was taking an auto shop class and I wanted to put my car on the lift. So me being, you know, 16 years old, like my car was a little too low for the lift. So I literally went to the front right of the car where the fender is and I tried to lift up the car to so I can just, you know, get it. So I had like one of my buddies, all right, can you just put, 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 the, put the lift? Yeah, this is, I'm going to lift and you put, and you know, you just put, put the, the, the arm for the, for the, you know, to lift the car up on the, on the bottom of the car where, where the anchor is. And so I lifted it and, you know, I was like, okay, you know, I'm strong, you know, I'm a big guy, whatever. And, oh, then, and, and I mentioned that because uh, I, I said I need a booster seat sitting yeah. next to you. <laughs> yeah. so and I'm, I'm a... sitting on the edge of the chair because if I sit in the chair, then I look like a little midget. So anyway, okay, so you lifted the car. <laughs> so I lifted the car and then, you know, later that day, my back just spasmed up. I was like this. It I could locked. not move. I locked up. I threw out my back. And so, you know, I had to go back to the chiropractor and, you know, I got, got adjusted and, you know, that, that helped, but like, you know, so doing, you know, dumb things like that. Yeah. That started that, it. That, and that's that started young that. too. And that's young. So I was 16. So, you know, and then all people have different kind of injuries like this and, you know, they don't, you know, some people don't know what to do. Like they don't know what, what, what to go about. You know, they'll go to their primary doctor, you know, they'll give medications, drugs. drugs and, you know, all right, well, here's some muscle relaxers and some painkillers. Which are great. They're, they're, you know, <laughs> they can be, yeah. <laughs> But for a minute. <laughs> for a minute, yeah. But uh, so, you know, the, the injuries like that. And then, um, so that, my back was prone to getting injured. And then, uh, so now going back to after I graduated high school, you know, I worked at UPS during my undergrad at South at San Francisco State. And uh, just doing repetitive motions, loading boxes into trailers, that's when I uh, had a disc herniation. I, so how old I mean, were you when that happened? So when that happened, I was, let's say, 20, nah, 20. Okay. About 20. So you're yeah. still thinking you've got this rock solid body. Rock solid, I'm a big uh -huh. guy. I'm strong. Yeah. I can do this. Because yeah. you know I was fit. You know I was running. I, I'd run. I do a little bit of jujitsu. We train. You know I'm, I'm working out at the gym. You know lifting weights and everything. But you know, but just you know improper body mechanics. I mean the body can only take so much. 
So I mean, doing you know doing this a lot that mm -hmm. that can just damage you. So you know, I, I had a disc herniation. I had pain down my leg. I couldn't walk. I could, you know, literally walking from taking three steps from here to there, I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I'd have to stop and bend down and just, you know, try and like breathe, breathe and contain myself. Yeah, just to recuperate. So this is while you're at UPS and you're going yeah. to school at San Francisco State. And what were you studying there? Uh, psychology. So, you know, I, when I graduated high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was like, okay, do I want to be an auto mechanic? You know, because I, I like cars. I wanted to, that's my, I'm trying to lift a car. <laughs> you know, I, I like cars. So I was like, hmm, do you want to be a mechanic? Or I don't know, uh, maybe get into business. So I ended up going to CSM, uh, community college, and, you know, just try to figure my, myself out there. So you went there and got some general ed credit? Just my, got my, you know, did my general ed two years. And then my plan was to transfer to, you know, a university or, or state university. Do they have local. shop there? They, you know what, auto shop, they did not. Okay. So yeah, they didn't they didn't have it, and I didn't probably know, better for you than they did. Uh, uh -huh, yeah, you know, so I get hurt myself more. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I ended up uh, majoring, uh, start off with business, and then you know I started taking some accounting classes. I mean, you know, maybe I want to be an accountant. You know, I like numbers, and you know, this was good. But then it got a little too hard, a little too tedious, and I was just kind of bored. Yeah. A bit. So you know, I switched to psychology. You know, I, I, you know, people like talking to me. I'm, I've been told I'm a good listener. So I, you know, switched psychology and I found it really interesting. And so you went to state and you got a little bit of education in mm -hmm. psychology and became dangerous enough, dangerous enough to read people. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> the, you know, that, Can those you ones. turn that off? Because I know uh, a lot of like psychologists, psychiatrists, they they don't turn that nah, skill off. You, nah, you're, you're always always, reading always analyzing, always just looking yeah. around. You know, I, I people tell me I'm kind of like I can tend to be quiet and reserved. You know, like what do you? You're you seem like you're always watching, you're always thinking. What are you thinking? I'm like, oh, no, I'm just, you know, hanging out. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't help it. And I've always been that way. So, yeah. you know, all right, so psychology, you know, like that's, I think this seems like a good fit. So, you know, I majored in psychology. I transferred to SF State. I wanted to become a psychiatrist. You know, I was like, all right, do I, be, do I just do uh, general therapist um, or go to psychiatry? And then, you know, like, I was thinking, you know, I want to be a doctor. Like, uh, being a doctor, I, I, I you know, I want to help people. I want to. I want to do that. So, all right. You know, this will be a good pathway to get into it. You know, I didn't want to be a surgeon or just a general. You know, general practitioner uh, like psychology, like with psychology. I wanted to do that. So, I, uh, I started taking um, my pre med classes, some basic science classes, and started doing that. And you know, that was going great. And then, so this back injury happened again. What, what were you the, doing the, the, to? The, the, so working at UPS, you know, with that disc was when herniation, you were, okay. yeah. So and then at the time, you know, I hadn't been to a chiropractor in, you know, maybe six years. So I started, you know, I went on Yelp like how everybody does, you know, go on the internet. All right, let's see, because I was still living in Pacifica here at the time. So I, I you know, went on Yelp, googled chiropractors near me, and then that's when I found uh, Dr. Ken Thomas here at Eureka Square, and you know, he had good reviews. I was like, all right, you know, everybody seems like him, you know, he's. So you check like, them out. Yeah, yeah. So I checked them out, and then I went, and yeah, I, because I, 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 there was this one morning I, I could not get out of bed. I, so that's when I looked them by. I need somebody, and then they saw me right away that day. I was in acute case, like I could barely walk, and you know, they, they, they got me in. Yeah, like, and he's like, "Yeah, you're young. You're you're 20 years old. Like you should not, you know, have." You should not be lifting on. cars there. Not lifting cars. <laughs> and then, you know, then I showed them, you know, my, some of my old x-rays. And, and I have what's called lumbar degeneration. So it looks like this. So this is a healthy disc. This is a healthy. This, so, this, well, first of all, what we're looking at, this is your low back right here. Okay. So this is your lumbar spine. So this is this area right here. Okay. So this is a healthy disc. This is what, what healthy vertebras should look like. So I was more like down... Here, so you see how this disc is nice and plump and right, big. The width. Uh, yeah, mine was a little more decreased, so it started thinning out. So you know, just over repetitive injuries and in sports, you know, this starts breaking down, and that's what makes maybe susceptible more to injuries. And then you know, I was you know I was training, but not smart. I wasn't strengthening my core, and you know, so doing a lot of twisting, not not good for the. So strengthening your core will help with your back pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, think about like when you wear a brace, like a back brace, you know, that helps support you. It helps keep you supported and, you know, free to move around. You. Yeah, but your muscles, that's what they naturally do. Your muscles are, are like a natural back brace, like here in the, your core, this area. 
So you want to keep that strong and, you know, keep, keep your whole body strong. But that, being strong and have, having those muscles and ligaments support, you know, your bones and body will help prevent injuries. When I think of um, strengthening my core, I think of like laying on the floor and doing crunches. And mm -hmm. But I'm a Pinterest nut. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and so I've seen on Pinterest, you know, you don't have to lay on the floor and hold your neck and do all this stuff. You can actually strengthen your core. I strengthen, I do my core exercises with a hair dryer in my hand. You know, you just, or when I'm driving, you just suck your stomach in. And if you just kind of hold it and sort of move side to side, you can do these um, exercises without making a big production of mm -hmm. an hour a day. You can do them when you're driving, when you're sitting at your desk. and Yeah. And it's more functional, like more functional training. You know, it's more real world stuff, like of what you're actually doing. So, I mean, that's great. Like, you know. Getting creative. Plus, is who wants to lay on the floor and do crunches? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for like for half an hour. Just yeah, it's moment. painful. Yeah, you gotta, make, you gotta make it fun. <laughs> okay, so you're at UPS. This is when you went to see Dr. Thomas. Dr. Thomas, yes. Okay, so then what happened? Then, so, yeah, so, you know, he, he helped me, you know, he took a few adjustments to, you know, get me back to, you know, being out of pain. You know, because some, sometimes people think, like, all right, I'm gonna go to a chiropractor. They're gonna crack me, adjust me, and boom, I'm, I'm I'm gonna be fixed. You know, they expect like a miracle right away. I mean, sometimes it, people get lucky; it happens. You know, one adjustment, you know, they can get better, but most of the time it doesn't. It takes, you know, it's a process. Like it's yeah, it's, I, I was yeah. seeing a chiropractor in San Mateo for a while, and he said it's like going to the gym. You 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 have to keep going. You, yeah. You, you um, go eat macaroni and cheese. <laughs> you, then you got to go to the gym uh -huh. and chiropractic is like that too you you go do whatever you were doing or you walk that certain way that created the problem where you lift a box or you mm -hmm. do that movement that that ruins the adjustment so you have to go back because I I used to say why, why, why do I keep coming back well because I keep moving mm -hmm. yeah I mean initially you know when you're hurt right away yeah you need to go and you know get get treated you know make sure the the tissues heal you know, the joints are, you know, moving, you know, back in place where they should, you know, there's no fixations, you know, you, you, that needs to happen because there's the first, the, the injury phase. And then after that, you go into the, re the repair phase and then, you know, then the, the adjustment starts, you know, they start being spread out. And then once you're, you know, good, you're back to where you were, you know, pre-injury status, then, you know, it's just maintenance, you know, maybe, you know, we recommend our patients come in, you know, if, if they're, you know, that they have no issues, if they're pain-free, you know, if, if their bodies are good, you know, coming in, you know, four times a year, you know, well, you know at least, you know, yeah. it's good. It's just like, you know, when you go to a dentist, like, you, you, you know, go you, for you, you, you go, go for, for a, a checkup, you know, two yeah. times a year, it's the same thing, you know, with your spine, you only have one spine. You, you need to you take care of it. Yeah, you can't replace your spine <laughs> yeah. like you can replace your teeth. Exactly, yeah. I mean, if you lose a tooth, you know, you can get you can implants. Get, get another one. And, yeah, get, get me in yours, good to go. You can even upgrade your teeth nowadays. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, with the spine, you can't just go in and take out the spine and put a new one in. You know, you got to take care of what you got. Okay, so you went to um, Dr. Thomas, but you're still going to school. So where did the switching of majors happen to you switch yeah, so, so, you know, after, you know, Dr. Thomas helped me out, you know, with my back, I, I was, you know, I was better, uh, you know, I still kept going, so I'm like, all right, you know, I feel better when I yeah. go, you know, when I get adjusted, and I'm like, all right, so, you know, I would go, like, about once a month, you know, just to get my regular checkups, you know, get adjusted, and then, you know, I would still have my, you know, injuries here and there, you know, my back would stiffen up, you know, working out, cause I, and I was a runner, too, I would run a lot, you know, my legs would get tight, and, you know, so I needed, you know, he, he helped me out with stretches, and then you know they have excellent massage therapists there who you know would stretch me out and loosen up my muscles, and you know so I started you know getting to know him, getting to talk to him, and you know he started. That's when I started learning more about what chiropractic was. You know, not just you know boom boom crack pop. All right, you're good to go. You're feeling better. I, right. you know, they started telling me you know it's 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 about the nervous system. It's about making sure that. You know, because you have your brain and the nerves start from the brain and go all throughout your body to your arms, to your heart, lungs, you know, intestines, your feet, everything. Like, so if a nerve has interference, you know, and, and it's, you know, going to your lungs and if that nerve's not working, you know, you're not breathing as well as you should. You're not operating to your full potential. So, you know, make it's, it's like a, 
sometimes, sometimes we give the, this like a garden hose example. You know, if you have a garden hose in this in your big you know garden, and if there's like a rock that pinches that hose, you know that the water is not going through and it's not getting to the garden. Okay. And you know you have to um, you have to unblock that. You have to take that rock out. So when when we examine the spine. We, we're looking to see where that rock, where, where that's pinching on a nerve or where a vertebra is, you know, moved out of alignment. You know, we, we're, 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 we're examining, we're figuring out where it is, and then we, we find it, we adjust it, and, you know, that, that nerve can, you know, will flow better. And it stops the pain. And, and, you know, eventually, yeah, stops the pain. I mean, so that's the thing, too. Some, sometimes people don't have pain. You know, their, they're, they're, you know, joints will be locked up and... You know, we'll, we'll, we'll examine them like, okay, like, you know, do you feel anything here? And then they're like, oh, you know what, that is tender, but they didn't feel it before. I'm like, yeah, so, you know, this joint's not moving as well as these other ones are. Because, you know, movement is life. Joints want to move. Yeah, and sometimes people get, I, I for me, you get used to the pain. You, you yeah, almost some don't people, notice it anymore. Yeah, it's amazing. Just live with it. People, yeah, a lot of people just live with it. Oh, you know, that's, that's all, that's how, how I've always felt, you know, it's just part of life. But, you know, a, a thing that people are really familiar with is arthritis. So when joints don't move, that's when arthritis sets in. Because joints want to move. When, when, when they get stuck, they become arthritic and they start, you know, degrading, okay. breaking down. Mm -hmm. So And then that's what happened with me as well. So with my injuries, I would get hurt and, you know, I would have other injuries in the past. And I wasn't in, in necessarily so much pain that I'm like, okay, I need to go see somebody to get this taken care of. And that you know that locks up and that starts breaking down that's why i had such you know degeneration in my low back you know at a young age yeah then that, i didn't know that, that. and then you know that's what dr thomas taught me he he explained all that to me you know you know you need to get this handled you need to get these joints moving and you know you need to receive care and you know and then so you kept me, going back because you felt better kept going back because i felt better and you know I went for him, I went to him for so long to stay, well, like at two, two years in, yeah, I, I was, then I started thinking, like, you know what, maybe I want to be a chiropractor, you know, I can see myself doing this, working with my hands, and, you know, a more natural, holistic approach, because, you know, in psychiatry, you know, I, I was more, I, I wanted to, you know, use more psychoanalysis, you know, and not prescribe so many medications, you know. And drugs. I want to, you know, just to be able to talk to people and, you know, help them with their problems. But you know, with chiropractic, you know, there's it's it's completely natural. You know, there's no, you're still no helping people with their problems. You know, we're still helping. And then you know what? There's a little bit of psycho psychology yeah. in that as well. So I'm yeah. like, you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to chiropractic. I'm gonna you know change my path. I was already taking my pre med classes already. You know, science class. So you know, the the change wasn't too drastic. So okay. after I graduated SF State. I, um, you know, I, I took a little break, um, about nine months. You know, I, I still had a couple classes to take. I went back to CSM, uh, take a couple of prereqs that I still needed, and then transferred to Life Chiropractic College West out in Hayward. And you started taking classes there. We we talked just <laughs> briefly before I turned on the video. My mother wanted me to be a chiropractor, and as soon as I found out about the cadavers, I said, "No way, I forget <laughs> it." But we used to go to uh, Dr. Allwander in South City, and mm. she, she, you know, he had racehorses, and he, I mean, he was just rolling in dough. You would go into the treatment room, and it was, it was a lineup of four or five rooms, and it, they were like stalls. You'd go into your stall, mm -hmm. and then he would open the door. You'd go into this big room where he would adjust you, and then he would leave, and then. He'd open the next door, and that person would come out of their stall yeah. and go in. But it's not like that at Dr. Thomas's office. Talk a little bit about the um, the treatment process there. So when patients first come in, you know they're they're, they're greeted by one of the assistants, one of the massage therapists, and you know they they bring them to the room. They ask them, you know, how they're doing, you know, how their body's feeling, you know, what were the areas of concern, you know, that they, they mark it down, you know, for Dr. Thomas or myself, and then. You know, they, they lay them on the table and then they start um, working on those areas. They start warming warming them up, you know, stretching, you know, getting the body loose. Because we, we find that the adjustments go a lot better once the body's, you know, warmed up and, you know, properly You just stretched. don't go in there and snap somebody and then they're gone. You, uh -huh. you have like a, a, a stretch, 
like you would if you were working out, a stretching time. Yeah, I mean, so some patients, you know, they they, they want to just have the adjustment. Some patients don't don't want the warm up process, but you know, mo most of them do. That's just, I mean, there's different ways of of you know practicing chiropractors with many different techniques. But uh, here at Eureka Square, we're we're more sports oriented. Sports oriented. Uh, we do a lot of um, rehab work, sports injuries, and a lot of mu muscle muscle. It's sort of long term. Work. I would imagine it's more long term because if you're dealing with athletes, they're constantly playing, they're constantly injuring mm -hmm. or re-injuring. So you're looking at them, um, or they're either avoiding an injury or recovering from an injury over, mm -hmm. I would imagine, a long period of time. Exactly, and I mean, also, I mean, we see a wide variety of patients as well. We see, you know, from newborns to newborns you know, to elderly. Yeah, you know, from womb to tomb. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, I yeah, 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 no, I mean, people just, you know, and it's, it's funny, a lot of people don't know that, you know, they, they think, okay, like an, a, an infant, a child, you know, how are you going to adjust them? But I mean, you can, you're not, you're not doing the standard way of, you know, using That's too much force, but it's a lot more gentle, you know, you just, you, you know, you, 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 you feel, you examine, you know, the neck, the spine, and. You know, we have uh, what we call an activator. We, we, we can use that tool. It's a little uh, impact tool, so it, it just goes like this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen like, it. Yeah. Yeah, or, you know, you can use your fingers very gently. You don't have to use a lot of force. Well, I know I, I get um, migraines occasionally, and I mm -hmm. can go and get an adjustment, and it's gone. So mm -hmm. it, I, I know, like, I could suffer with this terrible pain and, you know, can't see and all this for a couple of days or I can go to a chiropractor and get it done very quickly, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And it helps with allergies too, right? Allergies as well, yeah. So, you know, with the sinuses, you know, especially now in the springtime, you know, a lot of pollen's out. So we've been seeing a lot of people with sinuses and, you know, we can drain the sinuses, you know, here, you know, we have frontal sinuses and here, and, and we, with the activator tool that, that we said, you know, we, we can, adjust here and you know get just get everything drained mm -hmm. get 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 the sinuses cleared and you know to help with allergies to help just get that all that gunk you know out of your system you know just you know process through because with allergies it's all about all the pollen you know you breathe it in it just gets stuck in there and that's what's irritating your body oh okay and causing you know all the symptoms you know sneezing and, yeah you know, I, I've got them really bad right now I, yeah. I don't like to take the allergy pill but it's either that or I'm my eyes are just running all day exactly so yeah maybe i need to think about some chiropractor adjustments mm -hmm. i don't know i think I, I think i know one for you i don't know I, there may be one around here <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so you went to life chiropractic were you still working at ups so i was i was still and then by this time so i i was living in pacifica but five months before i started uh, life west i moved to oakland the East Bank to be closer to school, to, mm -hmm. but I was still working at, at at UPS, and my plan was I wanted to work the first two years of chiropractic school. So chiropractic school is four years. I wanted to do the first two, you know, just to kind of offset. I was going to take out student yeah. loans, and you know that was a whole ordeal. And I mean that, so you know, the student the student loan part that that like scared me. That 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 a was lot. I, I was a lot, you know, even with med school because you know either way. I was going to take out student loans, so I, I, at one point I was even thinking of maybe not, you know, just graduating SF State, and I was at UPS at the time, and I, I was thinking about just becoming a, a driver, UPS driver, and then, you know, I was already there, you know, I had good benefits, you know, it's, it was, you know, I, 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 I would be set, you know, I'd be, you know, I'd be comfortable, but I felt like I wanted more. I wanted to, you know, see, see what my potential was, so I wanted to you know, achieved, you know, in, in my family, I was the first uh, college graduate. So, you know, that was like a big deal to my family, you know, that, that made them proud. And then I was thinking, you know, to be a doctor, you know, that I was, I was just reaching now, I was just milking them. You know what, let's see how far I can go. I'm, I'm kind of uh, stubborn sometimes, kind of hard headed. So I was like, you know what, I, I, I think I could do this. Let's not, my heart can it be? Let's, let's go for it. And then, but then I started seeing like what it actually took, you know, the commitment, the long hours, you know, it was going to be a lot of schooling. And then taking out loans and I was like man I, I, I'm gonna have to work you know you know I, as much as I can you know to kind of offset that but so I, I you know I, I wanted to work my first two years I only ended up working one year because right away off the bat you know chiropractic school classes are from 8 
to five, you're there all day. And there's a lot of school, a lot of studying, and it's a quarter system. So, you know, the, each quarter is only 12 weeks and it's like really fast paced. Like you start off and then before you know it, you're, you gotta study for exams and midterms and everything with that. And then on top of that, I was working at UPS back in South City, so I would be in school for him. So you were in school, the school was in, is in Hayward? In Hayward, yeah. So then you'd go to South City for UPS. Yeah, so. And then you'd go to Oakland, cause for, because that's where you lived. And then I'd go back, you know, eat dinner, go, go to sleep, and then wake up again, like, and you did that five hours later. Year. Did that for a year. So, that's a uh, lot. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Some, some people, they can do it fine, but, I learned real quick that, yeah, my grades were starting to suffer <laughs> at first. Yeah, it was it was rough. It was rough. Yeah, I, That's was, a lot. I was like, ooh, this is not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. But you know, I, I sucked it up for a year, and then um, you know, talking to Dr. Thomas, you know, he that's when he became my mentor. He's like, he, he told me you know, we had a serious talk. He's like, you know what? If you're really serious about chiropractic, you know, you're gonna have to make a decision. Give you, up something. You have to give up something. You know, either you're gonna do it or you're not. And, you're gonna have to focus, you know, 100% on chiropractic if you're gonna do it, and focus on school, and you're gonna have to, you know, quit, you know, you have to quit UPS, and then because at the time also, so I started, you know, I was re-injuring my back again, you know, my, my disc herniation came back, I started having the pain down my leg again. Oh, you're exhausted. And then too. yeah, yeah, and then you know, I was going on disability, I was taking time off of work, and you know, it just became a point where it wasn't even worth it anymore. I wasn't working enough hours to, you know, get get my insurance get my benefits uh, because I, had, I was taking time off to study for exams and everything. It and then was, you're taking time off to be because you're injured. And then because I was injured so it's just you know I was like you know what and then just for me like I needed to fully commit uh, I needed to focus on school I needed to study as much as I can you know like school like studying and school like I, I, I was I was a you know decent student you know some people I was always jealous of them you know they would just study the material the night before Boom, and you know, Go get take A's. The test and they were the done. Yeah, I yeah. was not like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So school sometimes did not come easy to me like that. So I, I needed that extra time and focus and, and commitment to it. So. Yeah, if you're there from eight to five, mm -hmm. then you're going to UPS to work. Uh -huh. And you're driving from Oakland to Hayward to South City back to Oakland. Yeah. There's no time in there for anything. No. Yeah. Eat, eat, were you eating a lot of drive-through? <laughs> no, I tried. No, nah, I, I I was good on that. Uh, I it's sometimes you're there. But, <laughs> yeah, so, Subway. A lot, a lot of Subway. Of Subway. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, you're, you're not gonna be cooking. Nah, uh, yeah. I would. I mean, I, I would meal prep. I, I would do that. Oh, you did. I did. No, wow. I, you know, I, I would okay. try. You know, so I still try to eat help. Try to eat healthy. And um, but yeah, I mean, it was tough. It was. That was know, a long year. It was a long year. Yeah. But, uh, and then after, yeah, so I, I, I quit UPS and they were sad to see me go. They didn't want me to leave. They're like, no, what? You're gonna, you're leaving. You know, they, you know, I was really so you like, found your, leaving. you found your passion. But though. yeah, but they, you know, they understood like, yeah, you know, that, that's awesome. You know, we wish you the best of luck and, you know, we understand, you know, do what you got to do. So was it a given that you would go and work with Dr. Thomas? Was that decided early in the process? No, actually, uh, I like in, in the back of my mind, I always hope. Like I, I was, you know, I can see myself working here. Um, you know, yeah, this would be awesome, but I, it, it wasn't. And um, you know, but and, and then so later on, I, I realized, you know, I found out, you know, talking with him, you know, he always had in the back of his mind too. He's like, you know, maybe I can see myself working with him, but I, I never brought it up. I was, you know, too. I didn't feel it was my place. I, I didn't feel like it was appropriate. Like I don't know. I, I didn't want to be like a burden. I don't know. I, I have trouble asking for help. <laughs> uh, I'm always told, um, you know, my girlfriend always tells me, she's like, yeah, you need to ask for help, like, yeah. you know, when you need it, you know. Sure. I guess I'm, I'm back to the stubbornness. Okay. Stubbornness <laughs> yeah. too, too proud, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, but I mean, Dr. Thomas always, throughout my school, you know, he always helped me out. He would reach out and, you know, ask me how I'm doing, you mm -hmm. know. He would give me resources and, you know, we'd stay in touch. You know, we did, we, we, we knew each other. He was like my unofficial mentor at the time, but you know we, we were. But I, I still saw him. You know he was my doctor, and, and I was. You know, and he's like he's really busy, and I and also I, I didn't want to impose. I didn't want to, sure. you know. I felt like I was bothering him, but no, he always told me like, no, if you need like any help, if you need anything, reach out. You know. Yeah. 
um, with chiropractic, do you do you have to have like um, practical hours? Do you have to be in an office and shadowing or following or something? So you can, so you you need clinic hours. So oh, that's, at, okay. in the school, yeah, you you so your your third, your no your your last year of schooling. You, you're you're in the clinic. You're in the you're in the student clinic. You're you're seeing. They patients. have that there. That they, they have it there. Yeah, it's, it's on campus, on site. But uh, well, you you have a you have to complete uh, a minimum amount of hours and uh, and adjustments on on patients. And some people do it really really quick. They they finish to get through it, and then you can go and do um, a perceptorship and an externship at at an office, mm-hmm. and then get experience there. It's it's not required, but you you can do it. But you have to finish those numbers there at the school. Now at Life West, they, they in in other schools, I believe you you can go to other clinics, go like go go to out to offices and complete your hours. But at Life West, we we didn't have that option. So, so what point did you work it out that you would be working at Eureka Square? So my last yeah my last year. So yeah, literally the the last year. Um, so I, I was finishing up clinic and. You know, I was, I was, I was, you know, because I, I would still go get adjusted uh, with Dr. Thomas. I didn't have a lot of time during school, but like during, during my breaks, I would go. And then you know, we started talking more. And then you know, he, Dr. Thomas, started kind of asking me, yeah. So you know, what are your plans like after? And I'm like, you know, honestly, I don't know yet. I'm, but I'm, I'm gonna start looking around. You know, need so a go, job. Le, le, yeah, you know, I need a job soon. <laughs> I'm gonna start, you know, see, see another looking around other offices. And then I kind of <laughs> joked, I'm like, I don't know, maybe you're looking for somebody here. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of laughed too, and then you know, we're like, all right. But uh, yeah, then one day he uh, he texts me. He's like, hey, uh, are you available this Saturday? Are you are you free? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, c- come by the office. Kind of uh, assess me, see what I've learned. You know, mm-hmm. pr- practice, do some, do some setups. So pretty much that's what I took it as. I'm like, oh snap. <laughs> this sounds like an interview. I'm like, oh, but he didn't say it. He's just like, I just want to talk about, see, you know, where your plans are. And yeah. I'm like, is this an interview? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I ended up going, you know, I went, you know, I dressed professional. <laughs> you know, so yeah. that, I don't want to you know, just go in like a you know, backwards cap or, or anything. So I'm like, yeah. okay, I should probably dress up for this. I was, you know, I was talking to my friends. I'm like, does this sound like an interview too? He's like, oh, like, dude, that's. That's yeah, because that's the, don't you want to work there? That's like the doctor. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, okay, so I should, you know, prepare. And then, yeah, I went and, you know, we sat down and talked and, you know, about what my plans were. And you know, I told them, yeah, I mean, I'm, because I was, I was, I started looking at other offices, you know, the, the doctors that were looking for an associate, sure. you know, see, see any, any options. And, and, you know, I was, I was telling them that. And, you know, I told them, he asked me, you know, what, what my qualifications were. And, you know, I told them, so, because I'm also, you know, sports oriented, mm-hmm. chiropractic, you know, uh, I do um, kinesio taping, I use rock tape, you know, I was telling them, yeah, like, I, I use that. So, I'm not familiar with what that tape. is. So, have you ever seen the athletes, like, so, like, they on the colored, Warriors, ooh. they have tape on, on their arms, yeah. yeah, they'll have, like, a strip or a band, yeah, yeah. That's, um, that's a kinesio tape. So, they, they use that for pain management and support. So it, it, it helps. So is it like taking off a band aid? Is it gonna it, rip all your hair? Or uh, yeah. It does. So it does. So I mean, I. <laughs> yeah. If if you're hairy, it's, <laughs> go against. Go go with the grain. Go with oh the grain where you're gosh. taking that okay. off. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it helps with performance and with pain management and helps with uh, muscle tension and has a lot of other. So it sounds like you can kind of um, guide athletes in. Um, Keeping from getting injured as well as yeah. helping them after they've been injured or exactly so you know with the with sports rehab you know we we treat a lot of injuries and then even uh, post surgery cases you know because scar tissue forms when when that happens when injuries happen so our job is to break down that scar tissue because with scar tissue when that forms the the area becomes stiff sore and weak mm-hmm. and painful. And, you know, so, you know, that becomes limited motion. So, you know, you want to break all that up and, you know, get it, you know, moving, you know, back to its, its original, you know, state. What would you tell uh, athletes about how to take care of their bodies when they're playing? And all right. So, I mean, nutrition and diet is key, is key for that's one. First. Yeah, that's first, you know, staying hydrated for sure, because, you know, it's. 
you know, with, with playing, you know, playing sports and, you know, working out, you know, your body's going through a lot, you know, and after it, it needs to repair itself, it needs to, you know, recuperate. So the nutrition for sure is, is key. And then, you know, proper training, you know, not overdoing it and or not I mean, overdoing it's it. There's got to be a difference between, you know, training hard and overdoing it, pushing yourself too yeah. hard. And no, oh yeah. So we, yeah, we see that for sure too. There's people who, you know, are sedentary, don't do enough, but then there's so some people. New Year's who, Day, they're out there. They're out there, yeah, going, you know, going 100 miles an hour. But yeah, I mean, you can also do too much. It's, you need to find that, you know, that sweet balance, that that middle ground. Where, you know, so nutrition and water, and then. But the balance of not yeah so i mean you know proper training you know so with 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 exercise so you know there's there's strength training there's cardio you know make sure you have proper cardio and then stretching so a lot of people some some sometimes a lot of injuries happen from people just not stretching not now i've heard flexible. about if you stretch before or after or both or in the middle or what what's the deal with stretching so you should be stretching all the time all the time. Yeah, so uh, I mean, for a workout, like uh, personally, I like to warm up on the on the treadmill or on the elliptical or you know a light jog, you know, just get the heart pumping, get the blood flowing, and then you know doing some stretches because you you don't want to stretch too intensely right away. You know, muscles, you know, they're tight. It's like they're like rubber bands. You know, they're, they're, they're stiff. You gotta. gotta so you warm up a little bit, do a little, a little bit of stretching. Yeah. Then you go work out, do mm -hmm. your. Like your the major part of your workout, and then you stretch again. And then you stretch again, yeah, like a pull down period. You know, you do that, and then, um, but also you know, at home, you know, go, before going to bed in the morning, you know, doing some light stretches, not going too hard. Like I said, muscles are, 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 are tight. You know, they they need to be warmed up. You know, gently, slowly. So you know, doing doing some stretching also is, is good. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning, waking up, and then before going to bed. So also, you know, some, some good... And like I said, Pinterest is a really good source <laughs> for, for that. You can find a lot of good um, exercises, you know, stretching that you can do while you're still in bed or when you're in the car or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you advise someone who's thinking about um, becoming a chiropractor? What, what do they need to know? So they, they need to know, you know... It's a commitment. It's, <laughs> it is a commitment, you know, just with their, you know, uh, I, I would, you know, reach out to a chiropractor, you know, they're, wherever they're at, you know, a local, you know, in their town office, you know, just, you know, you can shadow them, you know, see see what a day in the life is like, you know, uh, how, how, you know, you interact with patients, you know, what, what you do with patients, you know, for sure. I mean, just with anything, you know, if you're getting into any kind of career, you know, just, you know, talk to somebody, you know, who's that's in it, already doing that's it. already doing it. Yeah, that, that's what I would do. Would you, sure. would, do you think it's a good career for people to get into? Would you do it again? I would do it again. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's it was, it was a long journey, but you know what? Those, those long, hard journeys are usually the most rewarding at the end. Yeah. And yeah, not for sure. I found, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have found, you know, my passion, my calling, you know, it took a while to find it, you know, I, I went through a lot of, uh, you know, different changes and everything, and then, and then going through, um, you know, not, not, uh, going, not, not doing it, um, actually, so, before I started chiropractic school, my father passed away, and, um, suddenly, and I, that kind of, I, I didn't want to do any school, and that, that, that's kind of going back to, so, I was at UPS, I, I was just thinking of, you know, I don't, I don't have the right mindset to just go to school. I, um, I almost dropped out. You know, I didn't want to. It was too hard. Yeah, at the time. So that, that, that was a little rough patch there. And I was all right. Well, my, I'm I'm a UPS. You know, I'm, I'm settled here. I can just, you know, do this. But it, it, it took, got a nice took, retirement and nice retirement. Can be okay. Exactly. Yeah. Because I mean, with chiropractors, you know, we're, we're we're small business owners. You know, we're on our own. We don't have. You know, like in, in the medical field, you know, just you know, everybody just comes to you. You have to go out and you know, bring bring in the patients. You know, you have to teach people like what chiropractic is and know mm -hmm. what we do. You know. Yeah, talking to small business owners, it, it I'm I'm one myself, mm -hmm. and um, and it's really hard. And I know, um, you know, kind of going back to I wonder and. You know, you you look at someone in their career and you think how successful they are, and mm -hmm. you look at it from the outside and think, 
wow, you know, they make all this money and, you know, must be so easy. (laughs) Nothing is easy, first of all. And when you're looking at people, you know, you have to realize what they went through to get where they are. Mm -hmm. And um, with real estate and any, any small business, you know, it takes years. It takes years. And then anything can throw it completely under the bus about economy, you know, bills, overextending yourself, spending yeah. maybe too much money in marketing or w- whatever it is. Small business is a really, really tough way to make a living. Yeah. So you can't just, I know people do all the time. They look, look think realtors make so much money, which it makes me laugh because they, they don't realize what you spend. And I mm-hmm. would imagine um, any small business, inclu- including chiropractic, is like that. You have insurance, you have offices, you have staff, you, you have you know, overhead, y- tons yeah. of expenses. Mm-hmm. So that said, still chiropractic is a is a good business to get into, a good field for people. Um, they want to help someone, mm-hmm. um, and I, I like I really like your niche, the sports arena, mm-hmm. um, helping athletes. I think. Uh, you're a good example of that being being young and injuring yourself you know it, we do it all the time we think we're invincible yeah. let's go lift a car seems Small like a car. good idea at the time Why not? Eh. It was a small um, little hatchback yeah. it wasn't that big it's of a deal just, it's just a humble 2,000 2,500 pounds whatever yeah right? no problem yeah. but um, it's it's not as easy as it looks no. and how, how long were you at um, life chiropractic school so four, I took a little longer in the clinic, so about four and a half years. Four and a half years, that, yeah. Almost four and a half it's years, a huge yeah. commitment, and um, I, I think anything that you that you want bad enough and anything that you want to be successful at, and um, it takes time. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that I wonder example because he was probably – a chiropractor for 30 years by the time I was looking at his racing horses you know <laughs> it doesn't it's not it's not like you got out of school and all of a sudden you know he's driving a Ferrari or something it takes a long time and not everybody gets to that level not everybody wants to get to that level no yeah I mean everybody has their own definition of success you know I mean yeah sure you know your definition of success, yeah, I want the big house, I want the Ferrari, I want this and that. All right, you know, more power to you. But, you know, some people, are, you know, they don't need that much to be happy. You know, some but some people, you know, less is more. You know, as long as I'm, you know, comfortable, you know, I can provide for my family, you know, take care of myself, you know, pay the bills. Yeah. You know, that's that's enough. You know, that's, that's their, you know, version of success. You know, and that's... Yeah, I think, I think um, for me, I, I, I was... For a long time thinking oh yeah I want the big house and then I, I I see people that have that they're not necessarily happy you yeah. know you think that's what's gonna make you happy and then you I had a big house you know and a fancy car and all that stuff and that didn't make me happy mm-hmm. but you know sometimes you think it's going to and it's really that's not it no so I mean going back to you know like what you know what I do you know treating patients you know when I see like when I, I get a difficult case, you know, and then you, you look at it like, oh, like what am I what am I gonna do here? Especially you know me being a young doctor, you know, I'm I'm only I'm, I'm almost a year out, you know, of school. You know, I'm still in my first year, but I've had some tough cases already. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is the real world. I gotta, yeah. what do I do? I mean, luckily I have Dr. Thomas, you know, to fall back on, you know, ask, you know, what, what to do. But again, sometimes I don't want to ask for help. <laughs> but, yeah. you know but I do like if it, if it is you know over my head you know I will ask but yeah real estate's like that too when I when I started they're like okay there's the phone go get some clients and I thought I can, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna learn how to sell real estate by trying it on somebody I mm-hmm. I went and worked for someone yeah. for a long time actually several times worked for an agent so that I could learn what to do yeah. and you don't want to just um I don't want to do trial and error on somebody. Yeah, but then you know what? Like what what I've also learned is we're cap- more capable than we know. Like we have the skills, or you have the training. The it is. Yeah, and like so, we don't I, give ourselves. I, enough we don't give credit. enough credit. Yeah. So how do people reach you if they uh, want to make an appointment, or uh, maybe they want to talk about being a chiropractor? 
Yeah, sure. Um, you know, they, they can reach us at uh, my, on my Facebook page, Dr. Eddie Haro, uh, DC. Uh, they, they can call call our office uh, at 650-738-2225. Uh, visit our website, uh, pacificachiro.com, or just stop by the office. Yeah. And you're open to talking talking to future chiropractors and giving them a few tips. And I am. You know, I, I want to pass it forward. You know, Dr. Thomas, you know, he got me into chiropractic. He helped me out a lot. And, you know, that's that's also, you know, he that's why he brought me brought me in also you know he you know you, you want to pass it forward you know you want to help you know somebody else you know he wants to you know spread chiropractic you know it's not just about you know me or him you know doctors but just chiropractic in general you mm -hmm. know we want to he believes in it he believes in it yeah you know it's mm -hmm. helped out it's helped a lot of people you know we see it every day you know yeah it, it works well thanks yeah well, thanks thank for you, coming Vicky. out yeah thanks for having me it's always a pleasure <laughs> yeah hanging out with you